So I want to talk today about something called content security policy. And if you've seen any of my blogs or you've seen me on Twitter, you'll know that this is something that I'm a huge advocate of. Um, I refer to CSP here as the Swiss army knife of my AppSec toolkit because it is really such a multi-purpose tool and it can be almost infinitely fine-tuned to your specific needs. And one of the things that usually happens when I talk about an awesome browser security feature is people say, oh, support's probably terrible. But good news, support for CSP is not terrible. Uh, content security policy is supported in pretty much all mainstream browsers now. And the support is actually slightly better on the left end of this scale than the right. Um, <laughs> but we do have support across all mainstream browsers. Uh, content security policy itself was created to prevent content injection attacks. So it was designed to stop people being able to get content into our pages that shouldn't be there. And we do this by returning the content security policy header and giving the browser a policy to enforce on that particular page. So you can see it's literally just a HTTP response header that we send back with pages for our site. And the policy itself is enforced against the page and the browser um, will take that policy and enforce it against just the single page. It doesn't have a lifetime, it's not stored or cached. It's literally handled on a per page basis. The policy itself is constructed of one or more of what we call the CSP directives. And the directives are fairly, uh, fairly well named. Uh, this is a subset of the directives. I, think, uh, I don't even think this is half of them, actually. But you can see we have some pretty obvious names. So in the top right, we've got the image source. So you can specify a list of locations that the browser is allowed to load images for your site. And it kind of goes on like this with the rest of the directives. We've got the font source. Where are you allowed to load fonts from? We've got the style source. Where can this page load styles? And things get really interesting when we look at things like the script source. So obviously, one of the biggest things that, cross, um, that CSP gives us, sorry, is a protection against cross-site scripting. And we're going to cover this as well as some of the other things that we can get from CSP. So just to show you, I made the, the most basic policy that I could possibly think of, just so you can see what this looks like. So you issue the content security policy header as a response with one of your pages. And we're using the default source here. Now, all of the uh, directives that you saw on the pre previous slide will fall back to the default source if they aren't specified. So this, can, uh, this allows you to have a fairly relaxed approach to CSP if you want. You can say, by default, these are the locations that we would like to load content from. Uh, we've, I've used the CSP keyword here called self, which is basically just whoever served you the page. So we're happy to load content from that domain. And I've also specified another, another domain here just to show how the list is actually constructed. And this looks like a fairly basic policy. And you might think that it, it wouldn't even offer a lot of protection. But it would actually be very difficult to deploy this policy to almost any production site because of the amount of content that we load from third party locations. So what we have to do, we have to take kind of a fairly basic CSP like this and fine tune it for our needs. So I started out with a default source of self. So by, by default, I'm happy to load any type of content into my pages from my own domain. And then you need to start expanding out into the other directives that we have available to start restricting down the scope of the locations the browser can load further content from. So I've specified the script source here. Uh, and again, when you specify a new directive, you actually override the default. You don't inherit from it. So if you want to be able to load scripts from yourself, you have to specify the self keyword again. And I load a couple of JavaScript libraries from the Cloudflare CDN, and I also load jQuery from the Google CDN. So if you want to be able to load those particular assets on your page, you have to whitelist the sources in your content security policy. And when you add those sources in, it allows you to do things like this in your page. So the browser will now analyze any script tag on the page, and it will check the origin of the location that the script is being loaded from. If, this, if the location the script's being loaded from is not in the whitelist, the browser will not load the script. So we've already neutralized one of the uh, potential avenues for getting script payloads into our pages by banning any third party origin that's not actually in our content security policy. And you continue on like this, fine tuning. Um, so we specify the script source, and then we have a list of locations we're happy to load scripts from. You go on and specify the style source and the image source. And you can, you can be as restrictive or as loose about this as you like. You can have a fairly relaxed policy and just specify some fairly generic defaults and say, we're happy to load you know, content from these locations. Or you can go really strict and specify every single type of content and restrict them down to just specific locations that they can be loaded from. One of the, uh, one of the things that I, I hear CSP talked about a lot for is its ability to mitigate cross-site scripting. Um, 
it's one of the great features that CSP has, but it's not the only feature, which is why I refer to it as, as kind of my Swiss Army knife. Um, so I'm going to cover XSS and how it protects us against XSS. And it's because all inline script like this is banned by default. If you issue a content security policy on your site and put this script tag into your page, the browser would not execute it because by default, inline script is completely blocked. And that's because the browser has no context. It has no information on where this script came from. What was the origin of this script? Did we as the host put that there, or has somebody put that there as part of a malicious attack? This script isn't particularly malicious in what it does, but the browser can't know that. It doesn't know that. So by default, we have to block them all. What we do then is we externalize that script into a JS file, and then we load it into our page, and we give the browser then a piece of information, because the browser now loads this from my domain. So it's on the whitelist, it's good, we can load it in and we can run it. So we're giving the browser a piece of information to make the decision of whether or not we should load and execute this script. Coupled with the whitelist for where we can load script from, this is what gives us such a great cross-site scripting protection with CSP, because we're not going to execute inline script if they manage to get it into the page. And if they do inject a script tag with a third-party source at evil.com, hopefully evil.com is not in your script whitelist and the browser won't load it anyway. So that's kind of the, the main point of CSP. It's what I often hear people talking about. Um, and it's, you know, it's an obvious win for organizations to have cross-site scripting protection of this level. But there is a lot more that we can do with CSP. So I've kind of cherry-picked out some more of the directives to have a look at. Um, again, this is still not an exhaustive list. Uh, we're covering about two-thirds of the directives here now. Uh, but I've picked out some of the interesting ones and some of the ones that I've, being seed, uh, I've seen being deployed slightly more widely recently. And the first one of these is the form action directive. Um, so instead of talking about content that we're going to fetch and load into our pages now, we're talking about restricting the browser from sending information to certain locations. If you have uh, a login form on your site, and I've seen a password manager company recently actually deploy this. So you imagine you're logging into your password manager, you're putting your username and super secret master password in. The last thing that you want is for that to be posted to somebody else other than the site in question. And this is what the form action directive controls. It controls the location that you're allowed to have in the actions for your forms. So you think about it, you don't want users logging in. And if somebody's manipulated your forms or injected their own form tags into the page, you really don't want the browser to post those sensitive user credentials to a third party location. So we can use the form action directive in CSP to tell the browser, you know, I only ever want you to actually post things to me. And because CSP is delivered and enforced on a per page basis, you may just issue this on your login pages. Maybe you have forms elsewhere that do post to other locations. You can issue a customized policy on a per page basis to give you the additional protections on your login page, but not to interfere with the generic operation of your site on other pages. We have frame ancestors. Um, some of you may have heard of the X-Frame Options header. It basically allows you to tell the browser whether or not you want your site to be framed by other sites. It's often used as a protection against clickjacking, so people can't do things like embed your login form into their own site to try and steal user credentials. Um, but X-Frame Options is, is kind of an on-off setting. It's not really that great. It's not very flexible. With Frame Ancestors in CSP, we can again specify a list of locations or sites that we're happy to frame us, and then anybody else by default can't because they were blocked from framing our pages. And again, we can, we can take this a step further using the fact that CSP is delivered on a per page basis because we may actually have areas of our site that we don't mind being framed or we want to be framed or may even need to be framed for them to operate because that's, that's how the site works. So you can issue uh, this particular directive, again, on your login pages to stop your login pages from being framed by a third party that you wouldn't want to do that. And it just controls the, the source attribute. So if somebody iframes you into their site, it will just not load. The browser will refuse to load that. Uh, we've then got block or mixed content and upgrade insecure requests. These kind of do what they say on the tin and are for sites that serve exclusively over HTTPS to prevent the risk of mixed content. If you uh, deploy HTTPS on your site, you can have the best crypto deployment in the world. Uh, you can get an A plus on the SSL labs test. Everything can be all green. But if you load a single HTTP asset into your browsing session, you could potentially risk kind of blowing all of that with one single insecure asset being introduced into the page. Uh, so as you would expect, block all mixed content will see um, a HTTP image or any asset in the page, and it will just not load it. It will say, this is not being loaded over a secure scheme. I'm not going to touch the asset. 
And then we, if, if you want, you can use upgrading secure. So it will take that HTTP image there, it will upgrade it to HTTPS and try and load it. Now obviously we can't guarantee that will work because the asset may not be available in securely, but at least we've kind of tried to, to fix the problem there. So this is really good for preventing mixed content warnings on your site. If you serve securely, um, you should look at deploying these because mixed content is bad. It gets bad markers in the UI and it degrades the user experience as well. So all these features are really good, but if you deploy them wrong, you potentially risk breaking your site because you might accidentally not whitelist your CDN and none of your JavaScript or your style sheets will load. So fortunately, CSP has us covered and you can issue the policy that you want to enforce, but you can append the header with the report only flag here that you can see. And what the browser will do with that is it will monitor the page and see if anything would have breached the CSP. It won't actually take the blocking action, but it will pop some errors in the dev console. So you can open up your site with the CSP in place and it will tell you, you can't read the error here, but it basically says, I refuse to load this image because the origin of the image is not in the whitelist. So I will not load it. But that kind of doesn't scale very well. You, it might be okay in like, you know, test and you can have people flying around your site it, with the dev console open, but deploying this on a much larger estate isn't really kind of viable. So we have something called CSP reporting. Uh, we've got another directive that you can see I've put in the policy here called the report URI directive. And this is a location that you want the browser to send a report to if the CSP is violated. So if we found that HTTP image on our page that shouldn't be there, the browser will actually post you a JSON payload into uh, the endpoint that you specify there. Now, the payload is, is really handy. The, the address that you can actually see there in the report URI directive is the service I run. And I think that reporting is crucial. If you're going to deploy a CSP, you have to deploy reporting. And this is the information that you get back. So we have the document URI. You can see exactly which page on your site has this offending asset on. In this particular case, you can see the violated directive was a script because we violated the script source directive. It includes the original policy just for testing purposes. If you deploy um, kind of customized policies in different areas of the site, you have the original policy as a reference point to see what happened. And you can see here the blocked URI was evil.com. So I know somewhere on that page on my site, there is a script tag trying to load content from evil.com. Now this could well be a cross-site scripting exploit and it could actively be being used right now and that's what's triggered the CSP. Without reporting, I wouldn't know about this. It's great that the CSP has taken the action and blocked the malicious script, but if I don't know about the underlying problem, I can't go fix it. Now there are browsers out there that still aren't CSP compliant, so those users would be at risk of attacks like this. But because of the reporting feature of CSP, it doesn't matter if we don't have 100% support across the browsers. We can still get information and feedback like this from browsers that do support CSP. And one of the other um, really cool things that I like about CSP is you can start to chain um, kind of different features together. And uh, you can start to see it being used in some really interesting ways. And there was uh, the Chrome Developer Summit last year, I think Emily Stark first covered this. And I've seen a couple of large media organizations using this in their production environments. And it's to help you migrate from HTTP to HTTPS, which if you have a back catalog of content that is like 10,000 articles and blogs and, and all kinds of other things that people may have included images and third party content from, going through and actually migrating to make sure that you have no mixed content when you do serve over HTTPS can be a real problem. So what you can do is you issue content security policy in report only mode. So straight away, it won't take any blocking action. It's not gonna break your site. And in the default source, you can actually just specify a scheme instead of a list of hosts. So you can say, I'm happy to load any content from anywhere. I don't really mind as long as it's loaded over HTTPS because that's the default scheme. And then you supply the report URI. So it will then and the thing I like about this is you're effectively turning the browsers of all of your visitors into tiny little QA bots because they're gonna load your pages, they'll see the content security policy, and they're gonna go through your entire page and try and find any HTTP assets on there. And if it does find a HTTP asset, it isn't gonna block it because we're in report only mode, but it will still send the report to you. So not only have you turned all of your visitors into little QA bots, they're actually gonna file really nice bug reports with the JSON payload that we saw. So they're gonna tell you the page that they found it on. They're gonna tell you which particular asset it was. And you will then be able to go to that specific location and fix that specific problem. Now, obviously it can be quite noisy, CSP reporting. Um, so I only recommend turning it on on slightly more mature policies. If you just say like, 
you know, default source, none, and then turn on reporting, it's going to report about everything on your site. So there are ways, um, before you start sending reports, use the dev console, have a fly around your site, pick up the obvious ones, make sure that, you know, you've got all of your legitimate CDN endpoints added, you've got, you know, all of your image hosting services are in there. Um, but, you know, the main reason that I run this service as, and for free as well is that CSP reporting is so crucially important. We have to... Uh, we have to have this enabled in order to be able to get this feedback from our policies. And these are just a few of the things that I've seen CSP be used for. Um, you know, there's more directives than I've covered here, and I'm sure there's more creative ways that people will think of, of deploying CSP and uses that you can get out of it. There's actually, you know, so much more that you can do. You can control, um, like, XHR requests. Um, it's, it's almost infinite, and you're limited by basically only how you can think of, uh, of deploying CSP. So that was kind of a, a very brief overview of CSP. Um, and the main point of my talk is that I want to try and, you know, it's not just about cross-site scripting. CSP has got so much more that it can do for you. Reporting is essential. If you're going to deploy CSP policy, enable reporting. And keep it in report-only mode for as long as you feel comfortable until you get your policy matured to a point where you actually feel safe enforcing that. I also see organizations um, deploying it on just a subset of pages. Maybe we don't want to deploy this policy to all one million of our visitors every day. Pick a subset of them. If you can inject headers on like a page-by-page -page basis, just send it to one in a thousand clients. But there, there is a lot that you can do with it. Um, if you see me on Twitter, you will see me talking about CSP a lot. I have a lot of material out there as well. And I would love to hear any ideas or thoughts that people have or uses for CSP that I may not have come across in the wild myself. So... Thank you very much.